Maria, your book opens in Kiev, Ukraine in 1992 as young Oksana and her parents are preparing to move to Florida. What's on her mind at this time? Um, what's on her mind at the time is that she really is going into the great unknown. She has no idea what to expect. Her family doesn't seem to know much about Florida, and um, she just can't really wrap her head around the fact that she's going to leave her home forever and that the adults that are leading her there don't seem to know what to do either. So this is shortly after Ukraine declared independence. Mm -hmm. And why did they decide to leave Ukraine at that time? Uh, well, I'm trying to think difference between what my family did and Oksana's family. They just came as, as Jewish refugees. Her mother was Jewish, and so they sought asylum, and they left with a community of other people um, around that time. But as kind of in the book, the community all went to a place called New Jersey, and so they went a different path and went to a place where they didn't know a soul and where the father got um, a job as a physicist. Now, he was an Olympian. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about his Olympic story. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, in, in uh, Ukraine and I think all the Soviet Union, the math Olympics were really big deal. So he was... Um, to to you know the Olympics kind of go I think from the city then the the state and then the national level and so he competed all the way to the national level and um, did really well and shook Brezhnev's hand and got an award and um, so he kind of came to America with this high kind of sense of his powers as a physicist that didn't really um, you know he he couldn't get a permanent position he's a postdoc he driving. Uh, you know, delivering pizzas to make ends meet. So it kind of didn't really match up to his idea of himself as a scientist. It, it seems to be kind of a common refrain in American history. Yeah. When people come to the United States, they have these wonderful qualifications and they're brilliant, but they're not quite valued as when they first get here. Yeah. And I mean, he had a, a PhD on his side, so he didn't, you know, he didn't have to get like a new degree or come with nothing, but still the the kind of science that he was doing was basically like pre or was it was Cold War physics. And so there wasn't such a need for it anymore once the Soviet Union fell. So he kind of felt like he, the kind of work he did was obsolete or not valued as much in the States. So she comes along with her mom and her dad, but also her paternal grandmother. Mm -hmm. And her grandmother is not your typical little granny. No. A <laughs> uh, hand knocks on it doesn't quite understand <clears throat> that she's not an old woman. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the, the Oksana doesn't, I mean, as a you know third grader, she thinks her grandma's 80 or 90 years old. And when she asks her grandma how old she is, the grandma gets really mad and says, hey, I'm only 55. So, you know, she still has a lot of life ahead. But um, to a small child, that's not really apparent. So kind of her grandma is a recent widow and is trying to date and trying to <clears throat> find a second career for herself in the States. And so Oksana is kind of not yet seeing her as her own person and as a as someone still trying to find a path for herself in the new country. Yeah, someone who just entered his 50s. I'm feeling <laughs> kind of wounded at that passage. <laughs> yeah. Now, it's just ostensibly her mom's an atheist, mm -hmm. but she's fond of saying, dearest God, I don't believe in. Mm-hmm. So did that you have something like that in your family or not n not directly um I, I, you know as as soviet people kind of like my mother's family is jewish my father's is not and so like my grandfather my great like my great grandmother was born during a pogrom and so or she was like in utero during a pogrom so she was kind of the last religious person in my family who was actually like jewish and like i think it meant something to her but um you know, in the Soviet Union, it wasn't like encouraged for you to pursue your religion, right? The religion was the state. So, um, so not that my family ever said we're atheists, we don't believe in God or anything. It was just that it wasn't like we first did some Jewish traditions when we came to the country, um, but then kind of that passed. <laughs> and so, uh, the dearest guy, I don't believe in it. Just my imagination of kind of um, if there was. A religious element to Oksana's life, like what that would look like and how that would manifest itself. And though it was not something that was said by my parents, I can imagine it being said. 